you know, Christianity could make my job a lot harder if they would just stop venerating horrible shit. They venerate a God that throws baby drowning temper tantrums and condemns adolescent girls to sex slavery. They venerate a savior who violently loses his shit at the forex, then takes his anger issues out on innocent date trees. They venerate a book that endorses slavery, child abuse, homophobia, witch hunting, genocide, and the list goes on and on. I mean, there are moral books out there. If, if you just took a book at random, you know, if they said, okay, we're going to switch to this new one. Now, uh, ready player one is the inerrant word of God. It's almost impossible that they would land on a less moral book in this scenario. Of course, one way or the other, that would be bad. You know, one way or the other saying, hey, this set of claims over here is sacred and can't be questioned. That's going to lead you down a bad road and we'd have to push back against it. But they could at least try to make it hard on us by starting with better shit. Like, how about any of the books that doesn't endorse murdering gay people? Any of them. And almost all of them don't when you come right down to it. And, you know, whenever I air this complaint, some people accuse me of, you know, trying to fight last millennia's battles. A lot of religious defenders would rightly point out that even the biblical literalists aren't taking the Bible literally. They may pretend that they believe in Noah's Ark, but even Ken Ham stopped short of stoning his kids to death for disobedience. You know, they would point out that the Bible has stayed the same, but the interpretation has evolved. And the stuff that Christians venerate today is much less morally reprehensible, which is a claim that'd be a lot easier to take seriously if they hadn't just made a saint out of mother motherfucking Teresa. Now, I, I want to start with an apology because I know a lot of you already know what a sadistic fuck Mother Teresa was, and, and I'm not going to sum it up any better than Hitchens did, but I'm amazed how often I come across people, even in the secular world, who still seem to think that this miserable bitch was some kind of moral icon. So let's start at the beginning. For all practical purposes, the legend of Mother Teresa begins in 1969 when some documentarian doesn't realize his DP is using an experimental low-light film stock. Right, he sees some shots later inside a dark orphanage that look really well lit and decides it can only be a miracle from heaven, the divine light of God radiating from Mother Teresa. And that's too stupid to believe, but whatever. It allows him to market his documentary as containing the first miracle ever captured on film, so he ran with it. And of course, the Catholic Church's PR machine was cool with that. Keep in mind that they knew about all the kid fucking even way back when, so anything to keep everybody's eyes on Calcutta, right? So, so they promoted this nun as like the paragon of virtue and charity, and they were so damn successful that when I first heard heard Hitch talking shit about her, I was like, dude, come on, you're fighting a losing battle here. I mean, the phrase blank is no Mother Teresa, but that, that was common parlance, and it was by no means limited to Catholics. In 1979, she wins the Nobel Peace Prize for, quote, work undertaken in the struggle to overcome poverty and distress, end quote, which is the exact opposite of what she actually did. Right. By her own admission, she had no interest in ending poverty or alleviating suffering, since both of those things bring a person closer to God. Her legacy isn't one of engaging in charity. It's one of perverting charity and subverting charity. She drew in volunteers and donations under the guise of altruism, sure. But her goal wasn't to help people. It was to make Christians, specifically to make poor and suffering Christians. By the time she died in 1997, she was running over 500 missions in 100 different countries, and by all credible accounts, the conditions in those places were deplorable. More than one objective reporter compared them to concentration camps. You know, stories of kids tied to their beds, dying people given nothing but aspirin and baptisms that they didn't ask for, hypodermic needles being rinsed in cold water and then reused, expired medicines being administered to patients, people shitting on the floor for lack of anywhere else to do it. I'm not talking about some Victorian-era mental asylum here. This shit was going on the year I got married. And look, we, we have this tendency to imagine medical facilities in really poor countries, and, and we're inclined to forgive that lack of sanitation, right? We're inclined to say, well, shit, you know, they're making do. But that was not the case with St ratchets hospitals her charity had more than enough money to provide if not modern care at least much better care but she chose not to because in her words quote there is something beautiful in seeing the poor accept their lot to suffer it like christ's passion the world gains much from their suffering end quote she literally chose not to give painkillers to people in pain because dying of cancer brought them closer to jesus now, of course, by all accounts, she wasn't quite as committed to this suffering shit when it was her turn to die. Apparently, she was plenty close enough to Jesus already. So when her ticker started to go, she treated herself to top flight medical treatment in the good old U.S. of A. So implied in the whole how awesome or miserable poor people thing is an unspoken addendum about it being way more awesome if you don't have to be one of them. This 
fucking cunt took money from fascist dictators. She took money from notorious frauds. She diverted hundreds of millions of dollars of charitable donations for some global Tuskegee experiment with only the control group. She was basically a demon overlord shy of being a Lovecraft villain, and this person they call a saint. Now, you know what, let's set aside the absurdity of the whole process of canonization for the time being, because I'll run out of breath eventually. But suffice to say, in order to take it seriously, you have to believe that a picture of Mother Teresa shot a magical laser into a lady and excised a tumor that her doctor said she never had. So even if they do manage to find a Catholic worth praising, they have to taint their legacy with some credulous investigation of a crazy person's miracle claim. The end result is mainstream news outlets pretending to take claims of posthumous wizardry seriously for the purposes of a fluff piece about a fanatical sadist. I mean, this can't possibly be the best they have, can it? I I'm sure the average Catholic has fewer skeletons in their closet than this morally perverse zealot. But I guess for the people making decisions at the Vatican, didn't rape any kids that we know of seems like a pretty high bar to clear. So they'll call her a saint, despite the fact that she is to humanitarians what the Bible is to codes of ethics.